Yo, what is going on everybody? Shri Kanasa here. So how to do product research for high ticket product. Now when it comes to drop shipping with Shopify in 2020, a lot of things have changed. Specifically, the type of products that you should be selling is one of the biggest things that has changed. And in my own opinion, if you haven't already even started looking at just higher ticket products in 2020 for your own drop shipping store, you may be a little behind. And by the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly why I recommend selling high ticket products in 2020 and onwards. But one thing regarding dropshipping that is definitely true is that there's increased amounts of competition and it doesn't matter really whether you use Facebook ads or Google ads or any other platform for advertising. The competition is just going to keep on increasing and with whatever's going on in the world right now, there has been a shift in the mindset of the buyers and exactly what they buy from dropshipping source like yours. So it's important to have a mix of both high ticket products as well as low ticket products. But without wasting any more time, let's find out exactly how to find those solid six-figure high ticket product the first thing you will have to do in order to really find success with this strategy is to gently tap that like button down below it'll take just two quick seconds okay hopefully you have done that but the first thing that i'll actually like to start talking about before discussing the strategy is why high ticket why should you even be looking into selling high ticket products in the first place the first thing you want to understand is that with high ticket products there's a very very high chance you will have a lower number of orders and you may look at this and think shouldn't you have a lot of orders instead of less orders and with high ticket it will usually be much lower orders than for your other products simply because these are expensive items unless you have a very very big winning product that's a golden winning product you will most likely only be getting a few orders every day but the beauty about that is that you will have less customers to deal with and you will have lower number of chargebacks disputes refunds etc simply because you can kind of provide a more specialized service to your few customers it is much much harder to provide personalized service especially if you're doing hundreds of orders every day and that is really where higher ticket products and high ticket winning products really shine the most but in addition you want to understand that having a lower number of orders when you're selling high ticket products is not necessarily a bad thing that is simply because you're going to have an higher average order value so instead of selling one product which cost only $20 and it takes you roughly 100 orders to do any type of significant amount of sales in a day with the higher ticket product say for example $500 you can achieve that high amount of sales in just a few orders maybe even three to four orders so that is generally the result of a higher average order value with the products that you're selling but in addition to that usually if you follow the strategies which I'm about to mention in this video you should get much higher profits from these products compared to your lower ticket items. So for example, if you sell a product for $20 on your Shopify store and you get it from AliExpress for $5, that leaves you with only a $15 profit margin to work with. On the other hand, if you sell a high ticket product, which costs $200 on AliExpress to buy, but then on your store, you sell it for $500, that leaves you with a whopping $300 of profit margins to work with. And clearly, that's a much, much higher amount. Now, while it may definitely be true that you will have to spend a little bit of extra money to find success selling that higher ticket product, it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be spending all of that $300 worth of profits that you could possibly get on achieving a customer. And if you watch my other videos, maybe it's on Google ads or Facebook ads, depending on whatever platform you use, you'll definitely be able to reduce that amount to a much, much lower amount and to get a lot of more profits compared to a lower ticket product and a lower ticket store. But the best thing about selling high ticket products or maybe just running a high ticket drop shipping store is that it is much, much harder to get copycats. What I mean by this is that usually if you sell a low ticket product on Facebook or Google, by the second or third week, if your product is a real winning product, you will have a lot of other drop shipping stores trying to copy your descriptions, your photos, etc and trying to sell the same exact product with a high ticket product or with a high ticket drop shipping store that is much harder because these other drop shippers which are copycats will generally think you are a big brand or generally will have trouble even sourcing the product or have doubts about selling a high ticket product like that so in that case it will be much much harder for somebody else to just come in and take your sales from you because you're selling a high ticket product so this also means that you'll be able to sell that high ticket product for a much longer period of time than you would a low ticket product so that's a real benefit when it comes to selling these high ticket products but the final and most important thing of all is that it is easier to brand a drop shipping store that's a high ticket drop shipping store or simply branding a high ticket product compared to branding those low ticket products because when it comes to branding there's a lot of steps involved and there's often extra expenses if you're already working with only a $15 profit margin it is going to be a hundred times more difficult to brand that product or that store compared to when you're working with a $300 profit margin so combining all 
all of these things. I personally believe in 2020, you should kind of focus more on high ticket products and just add more of those to your store if you haven't already, but always be sure to mix in some low ticket products as well, especially if you run a general store, that's very easy to do. But now that we've kind of discussed as to why even sell high ticket products in the first place, let's go ahead and find out the exact strategy on basically selling and finding those high ticket drop shipping products. So the first thing you'll actually have to understand is what you should avoid looking at when it comes to finding those high ticket drop shipping products. So the first thing you want to avoid is product research software. So now if you're trying to sell those $20, $30 products, even in that case, I recommend that you stay away from product research softwares, but that's kind of the gray area where it may be fine to use a product research software. But I personally believe product research softwares are not the way to go simply because just like you, there's hundreds and thousands of other drop shippers who have access to that same product research software. So in that case, you're kind of just competing with these other people and it may not really be the best way to find winning products. And one big thing about these product research softwares is that they're kind of just crawling Facebook, crawling these other websites and trying to steal other people's winning products. And in most cases, these winning products will be low ticket items, not high ticket items. So that is why you should avoid looking at product research softwares when doing product research for high ticket products. The second thing you should avoid is trying to pro do product research for branded products. And there's a lot of websites which sell branded products such as Amazon, eBay, etc. You want to kind of avoid selling any specific product, which is a branded product, because this can lead to copyright issues. Maybe you could even possibly get sued if you sell the wrong type of product. So avoid looking at branded products and a lot of these branding products will often be expensive, which is why you want to be very, very careful when doing product research for high ticket products. The third thing you want to avoid is extremely heavy items or extremely fragile items. Both of these things are something you should definitely avoid because these could end up costing you a lot more in returns, refunds, etc. than it does actually get you the profit. So you want to kind of be a little careful when selling heavy items and generally stay away from heavy items or to fragile items. But besides that, everything else you can basically sell. But let's start talking about the specific product research strategies and there will be a total of four. So the first one is actually doing Doing niche research. Now with high ticket product research, it is a little bit different than low ticket because with low ticket, you can simply go on AliExpress and start right away by looking at specific products which pop up. With high ticket products, you want to start off by kind of getting a general idea of which niches out there can actually even contain high ticket products. And I made a list of a few niches out there which I personally know have a lot of high ticket products. Some of these include farming tools, sports accessories, furniture, business and industrial supplies, etc. There's a lot more than these. This is just a general template of the few that I personally often look into, but they're definitely something you should go into. And it doesn't really matter what website you use to do product research for high ticket products. You can do AliExpress, you can do Amazon, etc. What matters is that you do the following. So the first thing you'll have to do is that you want to make sure there's a sorting function on whatever website that you use. And you want to sort by best match or mo in most cases, is price. You want the most costly item coming up at the top and the least costly at the bottom. And in addition to that, you want to make sure that you're only sourcing from reliable suppliers and you're actually sourcing a high quality product because dealing with the returns and refunds for these expensive items is really a hassle. And if you're only getting a few orders per day, dealing with even one or two returns or refunds will be a large amount of sales for that given day. So you want to make sure that whatever you're selling is very, very high quality, but you want to be sorting by these specific filters. And to kind of illustrate this, I'm going to go ahead and go on to AliExpress to show you exactly what I mean. So again, as I mentioned in the beginning, it doesn't matter what website you use, but what does matter is that you look into those specific categories, which I mentioned, or try to find your own, which are known for selling high quality, expensive items. So for instance, let's say we were looking at the home decoration or maybe even furniture niche. So what I would do is I would go on AliExpress, go to that specific niche and simply start off by looking into the niches rather than the individual products. So in this case, let's say, for example, we want to go to home improvement. Once we're on home improvement, if you go back to the Google Doc, we can see that we have to sort by the best match or sort by the price. So again, I actually recommend that you do the second one more often than the first one. But if you go back on AliExpress, all you have to do is click on the price button two times so that it offers you the most expensive items at the very top. And as you can see inside this specific niche, the most expensive item is roughly $32,000. Now, of course, as I already said, you want to be avoiding selling too heavy items or too fragile items. This looks like it's a very, very heavy product. So we want to avoid that. And we want to continue scrolling down. Basically, now is the time where you will decide which product you want to sell 
based on what advertising platform you plan to use. So with Facebook ads, you would of course be looking for those quirky, cool, innovative products, which can actually improve a person's life. And you also want to be thinking about what kind of video ad you can make, because when it's an expensive product, there's a lot more convincing you will have to do with the customer compared to a low ticket product. And in that case, I highly recommend that you use a video ad, maybe demonstrating the product or showing the product in use so that the customer can get a clear idea. And of course, with Facebook ads, it may be a little bit harder to sell these high ticket products. But with Google, if you plan to use Google ads, you wanna do, of course, keyword research, make sure that whatever specific product you plan to sell, there's demand for it on Google via the Google Keyword Planner tool or any other tool that you use. You wanna also make sure to look at Google Trends for that given product. Now, normally I like to stay away from products which are too technical, such as these specific types over here, as you can see, there may be a lot more convincing involved or may not work for the customer's desired needs. So in that case, it could be problematic. It could lead to more returns and refunds. So I like to sell little general items which are not too specific, but of course it will depend on which advertising platform you use. So this is strategy number one in doing product research. Research. Again, it doesn't really matter what specific website you use. You wanna make sure that you're ranking by the price, but in addition for high ticket products, I recommend that you check this box right here so that you're only looking at products which are four stars and above. Of course, this will definitely limit the types of products that you can see and the types of products you can actually sell, but it is much, much better to be limited than to be dealing with the returns and refunds for high ticket products. And again, the strategy remains the same. Simply scroll through, look at what products is interesting, quirky, and depending on what platform you use, go from there with the research. And I have tons of videos on using either platform. You can watch some of those videos on my channel, but that is product and research method number one. Now let's move on to method number two, and that is searching big brand stores. Now, again, this is kind of in conjunction with method number one, because you will have to kind of do niche research and find out exactly which niches sell the most expensive products before you actually go on Google and do research over there. But for example, let's say we want to sell within the farming tools niche, and we want to use product research method number two, which is searching big brand branded stores. Usually for these specific niches, which contain much more expensive products, the specific stores selling those products will often be big branded stores as well. So when we type in farming tools on Google, we can see a lot of different websites coming up and you want to be avoiding drop shipping websites in this case, because again, our main goal is looking at those big branded stores. So gardeners.com, definitely a big branded store in the outdoors niche. We could look at that. We could also look at these other specific websites, which are coming up. Max tools could be a potential big branded store. So once you go on these specific websites, all you have to do is go into any of the specific collections which they have. Of course, make sure that the collection you're going into may contain expensive products. If there's a collection on a specific website such as arts and crafts, I would stay away from that because it is very unlikely you'll be finding any expensive item within that collection. But yards and outdoors is a perfect collection to be finding expensive items. So once you go inside that, you can start off by doing more niche research. You can kind of narrow down where you want to be exactly looking into. So for example, for Furniture was on my list, so if you go inside outdoor furniture on gardeners.com, and then again, look at the filter section because having filters is extremely important even on these big branded stores. So here we can sort by best seller because we wanna know exactly what is selling the most on this specific website. So when we sort by best sellers within the furniture's collection, we can see that this, these specific products are selling really, really well. And as you can see, a lot of these products become high ticket products very, very quickly. So this is a $200 potting bench. You can definitely sell that depending on which advertising platform you use. You can also sell this specific product, which is roughly $700. And of course, these are just examples. You can do much more in-depth research, again, depending on which platform you use. But as you can see, these big branded stores have really, really expensive items. This is $4,000. And since this is such a big branded store, and this is at the very top, it is very, very likely that this has sold several times for this specific website. So this is exactly how you can continue doing research for finding those high ticket products. In addition, going to other specific websites, and you should never limit yourself to just one specific website. But again, same steps as before, simply go inside one specific collection. You can go to the general collection or kind of narrow it down to one specific one. Once you go inside that one specific collection, make sure that you can filter by a certain price or by the best seller. So in this case, on this specific website, we would simply be sorting by price high to low. And again, looking at what specific products are the most costly, as you can see, this specific safe over here is roughly $1,300. So from there, you can continue doing research and then try to source these products, whatever you find from AliExpress. Of course, you can watch my video on how to source products from Amazon or eBay and do that as well. But the general strategies for finding 
these products really stays the same. It's just a matter of setting specific filters and making sure that you're using other big branded stores to do research. Now let's move on to number three, and that is using Amazon. Now with Amazon, there's three specific ways you can do product research for high ticket products. Number one is through the movers and shakers list. Number two, new releases and number three gift ideas. All you have to do is go on Google and type in Amazon movers and shakers or Amazon new releases or Amazon gift ideas and it should be the first link. Once you go inside any of those specific websites, this is what you should see a very, very similar layout. All you have to do to do product research on these specific websites is simply go into one of the collections as I mentioned before because we want to be going into specific niches and specific collections for high ticket product research. Once you go inside any of these specific collections and again make sure that the collection you're going into may contain high ticket products. You don't want to be going inside something like arts, crafts and sewing because it is very, very unlikely you'll find a high ticket product there. But once you're inside a collection, simply scroll through and look at the prizes. Whatever is a little on the expensive side, go ahead and go on AliExpress and try to see if you can source that product. If you can, then you can continue on with finding more keywords. If you're using Google ads or making a good video for that product, if you're using Facebook, but the strategy again will say the same for Amazon. And again, simply Googling these two specific phrases will also lead you to Amazon new releases or Amazon gift ideas. So that's how you can use Amazon to do product research for those high ticket products. Let's move on to our final way of doing product research. And that is through simply just the AliExpress homepage. Now I did say that you should try to avoid looking at individual products and rather go into collections. But sometimes when you start going into these specific collections and looking at those high ticket products more and more often, AliExpress's homepage will start giving you more and more suggestions which are for products which are much more expensive. So as you can see, if you just scroll all the way down, you'll see a lot of specific recommendations given to you by AliExpress. And these recommendations are based on what you've already seen on the website. So if you just go and follow the first and second strategies, if you continuously go after and click on those high ticket products, you will soon start seeing a lot of expensive items right here on the homepage. And once you start seeing those specific items, you can simply start doing product research that way. And again, it will depend on which advertising platform you use. Make sure to choose products to test based on the advertising platform. But you want to be combining all of these four methods to find those six figure high ticket drop shipping products. Again, if you want more details on how to find specific products with specific categories for either Google or Facebook, I have tons of videos on that you can watch on my channel. But this was kind of the general template on how to do product research for high ticket products. If you found any type of value in this video, smash that like button and smash that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.